Pito be one speaking in a Twitter space yesterday where thousands tuned in to hear from him and asking questions. He was asked by one man to join the APC and head their economic team. Since he wants a Nigeria that works for everyone, he should use his ideas and implement those ideas within the APC government. Before we hear the exchange and the epic response from P2B, why do Nigerians have this kind of logic? Why should an experienced driver, someone who knows the job, who knows how to drive a vehicle, be made to sit in the passenger seat to direct an inexperienced driver to drive a vehicle? Who will enter such a vehicle? Why is it in politics that people always go for inexperienced people and expect them to hire experienced people to do the job? Why not elect someone that is experienced to do the job in the first place? Why is he not good enough to do the job of a president but is good enough to do the job of leading the economic team? Another way of looking at this strange logic is imagine three people are vying for the position of a managing director in a company and eventually the least experienced candidate is chosen by the board of directors. They quickly realize that they made a mistake, that the man is running down the company, that he doesn't know the job. Instead of firing him to employ a very experienced candidate to do the job, they go to the back, invite that experienced candidate and tell him to advise the least experienced person. How does that work? It's only in politics that people have this logic in Nigeria because no Nigerian company will allow this. If the managing director of a company is not competent, he will receive the hammer immediately. They will fire him. Yes, that's how a serious company will handle it. But in politics, there are very few options left for the citizens to sack an incompetent politician. After the incompetent politician scales the hurdles of elections and litigations that come after them, or in this case, he successfully hijacks the entire process, INEC officials, the judiciary, the police, the army, everything. The next option for the citizens is when he is seeking for re-election. So, let's even assume that there are some people who genuinely believe that Tinubu is competent. What will they do next time when he presents himself for re-election? Will they say, no, you are incompetent, we are not voting for you, we are voting for the right person who will do the job, who will sit as the driver and employ like minds to do the job of making Nigeria work for everyone? Or will they say yes, we will reward you because you have done a good job, despite knowing that he has made Nigeria worse, that Buhari handed over a bankrupt country to them? But look at their lives, look at the convoy of Tinubu in Medugri. They are not living the life of people who their bank accounts are in the red. Let's hear the guy's question and Peter B's response. Would it be out of place? since you are not able to become the president to offer hand of fellowship to work in this administration to make it work and make it better for what you want it to be now that's, that's exactly what i'm doing by being in opposition okay I, I, but being for in a system to work you must be able to have an effective alternative everywhere in the world even in your private business you must have a, an alternative that the reason why you're seeing America, Britain, the first world develop is because they have an effective opposition. One of the things that have killed Africa is not having effective opposition because everybody is lumped into one. That's what I'm providing now. I can show you places where things would have gone wrong and people said no. Listen, Peter B will oppose, oppose this or this person will oppose this. That is exactly what I'm doing now. That's why I'm even advocating that we have to either go back to a parliamentary system or have a near parliamentary system where whenever there is in the parliament anywhere, when it's presidential questions time or prime minister's question time, he answers it himself, not subletting it to somebody we didn't elect. So I'm doing that. And when I was governor, I tolerated that. Go and ask people like Dr. Chris Ngigi and everybody. I allowed them to criticize what I'm doing. That's the only way to work. Okay, so, so let me add to this, sir. If Thank you. you If you are hurting the economic team of this administration, largely, the economy team churns out policies that are people-oriented and people-friendly. <laughs> Your Excellency, sir. If someone with like you, with your knowledge, heads the economic team, trust me, whatever you want to do for Nigeria will be in place and it will be passed. So why not 
be in the ruling party and leave in the opposition now that no, it does not no, work. No, no, no. It would be wrong. It would destroy the system. Because let me tell you, what I'm saying now might look easy, but every leader has his own purpose and his own time. The people today are not saying they don't have the best of ideas. Yes, they have a lot of professors. They are wonderful people. But I will not drive this vehicle called Nigeria the same way. When I talk about things, I talk about cutting costs and everything. My brother has been governor. It wasn't easy for a lot of my colleagues to do what I am doing. I've also been, if you don't know, it's not just being governor. I've also been bank chairman in this country where I was the only bank chairman who was not living in the island. I lived in, in a place called Festac. And I come to meeting and I remember the bank telling me, you have to do this and everything. So people think I started this. In the, if you go to the bank where I was chairman, Fidelity, go there, I turned down chairman's vehicle. They wrote me a letter and told me, you entitled to this type of vehicle, Range Rover, Mercedes 500. I said, no. Because at that time, I drive pigeon. I said, my pigeon will bring me here. And I will do this job and go. I did not borrow one naira from them for one day. I said, I am not here. We are here to manage people's money. So we have different lifestyles. What I'm doing now is what I want to do for the country to be good. And it is better where I'm offering it. And I've said it alternatively. When they do things, that's what makes a system work. P2B also has a response to Abbabio. Remember when he said in a forum that P2B won't have won Lagos State and Ebony State without rigging. There was no way you could have won Lagos or Ebony State if not by rigging. Your Excellency, what are your thoughts on this? Thank you. I don't like joining issues with people. You know, the Senate President is an uncommon Senate President. Everything about him is uncommon. So, I like doing things with common people, not uncommon people, because I'm not one of that. Because he shouldn't even be talking about a birthday party in a country like this today. You saw what I, I, I put up an advert through my birthday that people should not come for anything and should not do drinks and do anything. Instead, whatever they have, they will give me or think about me. They should give it to the poor people around them. And that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm telling people. Even in this Christmas, I've told people I'm not celebrating Christmas. I'm not um, celebrating anything. And uh, I didn't even buy cards. I'm going to send people uh, WhatsApp message, all the, everything that I have to spend, I'm going to use it. I have about six nursing schools and hospitals that I intend to visit. Can you imagine that there's a bomb in Nigeria that killed over 80 people and several others injured and the hospital that is less than two hours drive from Abuja, and we're celebrating. And nobody has visited those people. No senior member of government has been there. If it happens in any other country, because of the circumstances, from the president, vice to senior president, they will visit there. They will show remorse. It calls for not celebrating. I didn't go out yesterday because I lost somebody I consider a well-meaning Nigeria patriot. As if, and that's how it should be. We have students from Akwaibu, where the senior president is, who are still held in captivity because they were going to do youth service and they're kidnapped. Their parents are still looking for their children. They're still crying. And we're celebrating. But like I said, my brother my bill is an uncommon person. And when a common person talks, common people keep quiet. I'm a common person. I respect his office. I respect him. I wish him well. You know I won the election, not just in Lagos and Ebony. I won the election in Nigeria. If not because, again, it's an uncommon place. It's an uncommon country. 
And that's what you get. Uncommon people are there because they did uncommon things. Thank you.